Dimensional analysis probably doesn't seem very useful at first, but it actually has a wide range of applications. It allows us not only to convert between different units and different measurements, it allows us to actually take entire things and find equivalent other things. This carries over well to chemistry because it allows us to take a substance and go from atoms to the amount of mass or volume that is equivalent to that. So with more complicated dimensional analysis problems, we start with a quantity. We use conversion rates to find its result or equivalent. When we do this with chemistry examples, when we're going between molecules and atoms and converting those into moles, moles are a set number of particles that make up something. So different substances will have different masses associated with a mole, but a mole doesn't tell us volume or mass, it tells us how many atoms or molecules that we have. And when we do these examples, we're always going to use this number, Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is a number that chemists use whenever they want to convert between moles and the actual number of atoms or molecules inside of them. You can see here that this uses scientific notation. This is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This number is actually rounded incidentally. There are several more digits here. You can see it's 6.022140857, but we're not going to worry about that. In this class, we'll be okay with just 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. So for our first example here, how many molecules are in one deciliter of water? Well, if we know the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter, if we know the molar mass of water, which is about 18 grams per mole, that gives us the ability to take a deciliter of water and figure out exactly how many atoms that would contain. And so to do this, we just use a number of conversion rates. First, since we're dealing with milliliters, we want to take a deciliter and convert it to milliliters. First, I'll convert it to liters because that's what your formula sheet has. Then I'll convert liters to milliliters. That takes care of the volume, and now I'm going to use the density of water to change that into a mass. When you're doing these more complicated problems, it's a good idea to cross out your units as you go, just so you always know which units you're working in. Remember, they should always divide out just like variables do. So, so far we're in grams. If we converted this so far, we would have a hundred grams of water. Now we'll use the molar mass to figure out how many moles that is. And so I could divide that by 18.01528 to get the number of moles. And then finally, I'm going to change moles to molecules. Now be careful here. Make sure you write out the entire word molecules because MOL here, molecules is not the same as moles. The abbreviation moles is not the same as molecules. So be very careful not to confuse those. We see that the grams divide. We see that the moles divide. And so what we're going to do is the same thing we've been doing. I'm going to take 1, divide by 10, multiply by 1,000, and this doesn't even do anything because a gram is a milliliter. You can skip that entirely. We'll divide by 18.01528, multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and you should get an answer that's in scientific notation. What I recommend you do for now is just skip 10 to the 23rd and we'll just attach that to our answer when we're finished. And so when you do that, you will get approximately 33.43 times 10 to the 23rd power molecules. This is not technically in scientific notation yet. I have to adjust this to get it in scientific notation. I have to move this decimal point one place to the left. That will make that number smaller, so to counterbalance I'll make this number bigger by adding one. And so it actually turns out we have 3.343 times 10 to the 24th power in molecules. We can do the same thing with ammonia down here. So with ammonia, here I'm going to start with a number of molecules and we'll convert this into milliliters. We'll find how much volume that is. When you start with scientific notation, I recommend getting that out of the way as soon as possible because it will just make your life a lot easier. What I'm going to do is take 4.875 and divide that by 6.022. And when I do that, I get approximately 0 0.8095 and then I'm going to handle these powers of 10. Well, if I have 20 on top and 23 on the bottom, I'll just subtract those and that will give me 10 to the negative third power. Now, it will probably make your life a little bit easier to just change this to standard notation now. This is moles incidentally. And so if I change this to standard notation, I'm going to move this decimal point three places to make it smaller. So I'll have 0 0.0008095. So a very, very, very tiny chunk of a mole here. And so I'm now going to finish off this problem by taking that tiny chunk of a mole and figuring out what the volume
volume of that will be in milliliters. To start with, I use the molar mass to convert that to grams. Once again, you can divide the units as you go, and I recommend you do that because, again, you should have one up here on top and one up here on the bottom, and the ability to line that up will give you numbers that you can be more confident in. And so next, I'm going to convert grams to kilograms, and the reason for that is because that will allow me to use this density rate. And then finally, I have cubic meters, but we want milliliters. If you'll remember, a milliliter is a cubic centimeter, so I'm just going to take cubic meters and convert them to cubic centimeters, because a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. And if you notice, I have cubed everything here in accordance with our previous video on higher powers. 100 to the third power works out to be 1 million. And so I'm going to take this 0 0.8095, multiply by 17.031, divide by 1,000, divide by 0 0.73, and ultimately multiply by a million. You will get about 18.89 cubic centimeters. And again, a cubic centimeter is a milliliter, so you get here 18.89 milliliters.